Winterizing Your Boat. Hello, I'm Duncan Wells, author of the Stress-Free Sailing Books, creator of MOB Lifesavers and principal of Westview Sailing. And I am Jonathan Parker. Uh, I run a company called Parker Marine Services and also Parker Adams Boat Sail. Jonathan's going to take us through how we winterize the engine. But first, let's run down the winterizing checklist. Engine. Check the fuel system, the oil system, coolant system, raw water system, gearbox oil and stern gland. Engine room bilges clean and dry. Check that the fuel tank is full. Sea cocks are closed. Fresh water, grey water and holding tanks emptied. Batteries checked and topped up. Rubber parts lubricated. Gas off. And boat aired warm and dry. So here's Jonathan to take us through it all. So from the point of view of fuel system, it's actually a good idea to change the fuel filters um, before we winterize. Um, so if we're not going to use the boat for a length of time, change the fuel filters. Because any dirt um, or water that's in the filters can actually grow um, bacteria and turn into diesel bug on that winter time. So you can actually get it growing in the fuel filters themselves. But if we change them, um, we have nice clean fuel in there and there's no chance of that happening. The same can be said for the oil system as well. Um, we can certainly check the oil now. Here's a dipstick and we can look at it and it's quite black. It's Stewart service this engine and we don't really um, want to be leaving the dirty oil in the engine for the whole winter period. So actually part of what I do in winterization, I change the oil in the oil filter as well as the fuel system. Um, the other things I'll do um, over the winter period as well um, from, from my point of view is I'll, um, um, I'll also check the coolant concentration. Um, we can use an antifreeze tester which we have here um, and we can simply take the cap off the cooling system, um, suck antifreeze into it, and depending on how many discs float actually tells us the concentration of the antifreeze. And, um, and this is indicating, because we've got five floating discs, that we're good for minus 34 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 37 degrees centigrade. And that is a really good concentration of antifreeze. And that's the strongest you'll probably get. And we can also see the coolant is nice and clear. So we can be confident that it's not going to freeze over the winter period. Um, if the coolant's of a certain age, um, and that could be between two and five years, um, it has corrosion inhibitors in it which can wear off. So depending on what type of antifreeze you have, you'll have a two or a five year limit on when that needs to be changed. Um, and um, if it is, say, over five years old, I'd certainly consider getting it changed um, for the winter period because if you don't have the corrosion inhibitors in there, even though the concentrate is good, it can cause surface corrosion within the antifreeze. You can normally tell after a while because the, the antifreeze actually starts to turn brown um, as the rust starts to form within the engine. Um, but that's a simple one we can check. Um, through winterization engines as well, what we'd normally do is um, flush the seawater out of the seawater side of the system. Now the seawater side um, is actually what causes the intercooler, it causes the heat exchangers, it can do other oil coolers as well. And if we leave the seawater in the system over the winter period, um, a build up of lime scale, salt can form and um, it can start to um, affect the cooling system's um, um, capacity as well as the, the way it works and um, the transfer of heat is greatly reduced if we have a um, contaminated system. So one thing we can do is I normally flush the seawater system with fresh water um, and then I'll actually um, then flush the system with a coolant mix. Um, depending from engine to engine, again, this is um, and the way we do this um, differs greatly, um, but it's a good idea to do that. So from a basic idea, we need to flush the cooling system. Um, but the way you do that, if you're not sure, um, is to take advice. Um, quite often the way I'll do it is uh, by putting it, letting the seawater pump on the engine do the work and um, I'll let the engine suck in the f see, uh, fresh water and then suck in the antifreeze afterwards. There's lots of different ways this can happen and the ways you do it. Um, so obviously take advice on that, but it's something that you need to consider when winterizing. Um, the, the other thing as well that we like that I normally do is any rubber components we need to look after. Um, and 
Um, when it comes to alternator belts, for example, normally I'll actually remove them for the winter period. Um, that will give me a chance to check the pulleys and the pulleys um, bearings, as well as protect them from corrosion. Um, and, um, and it lets the belts retain their shape so they're not set over a long period of time in a stretched form and, um, and it prolongs the life of the belts. The other thing as well is the seawater pump itself. There is an impeller in there and it's made of rubber and that doesn't like to be left in a fixed state for a long period of time. And it can actually become a quite a poor water pump when you first start the engine after a winter period with it in place. Um, so one advice with that is, is actually, um, if you're gonna changing it um, before launch or before you next use the boat anyway, then leave it in there and change it last minute. If you're gonna reuse the impeller, um, so you're not gonna change it um, after the winter period, then I'd actually remove it entirely and put it on the side so you know you've taken it out and remind yourself with the fan belts normally and um, leave it on the side, it will retain its shape and then fit it just before you launch the boat. In the engine room, we're between the engines, we need to keep the bilges dry, get any water out, check your operation of seacocks, replace any that are badly corroded, and then they must be off when we winterize. Remind yourself that they're off by writing something down. Water strainers for the engines. What we need to do, we need to um, take the lids off with the seacock off, clean them out, clean out the bowls, put them back in. We can use this to flush the engine system. We can either hose through or antifreeze in, and then we can run the engine and then that'll flush the system. Okay, so here we are at the back of the engine and we've got the, um, the gearbox, which goes onto the gearbox coupling, which then goes onto the propeller shaft, which goes out the back of the boat via the stern seal. Um, and really part of the winterizing, we need to make sure that the stern seal is not leaking. Um, if there's any drips or uh, anything from it at all, we need to sort it. Um, whether that's adjusting the stern seal or replacing it, it just needs to be sorted. We don't want any leaks into the boat whatsoever. Okay, so here we have a, um, a stern drive on a motorboat. And stern drives as well need to be winterized. Um, the best thing you can actually do with a stern drive is actually change the oil. So when it gets out the water, um, we wanna be changing the oil and we'll check it for water contamination and also because it's had its yearly use, um, it needs to be changed before we leave the boat for a long period of time. That'll leave it with nice clean oil in it. Um, also, um, it's this section here which is where this, the water gets sucked into the engines so we can actually flush the engines from this point and we use what we call a bellows so it's a contraption that goes over each water intake and we put a hose on it and once the hose is running we can then start the engine and then what we do we wait for water to come out of the propellers and which is also the exhaust and um, and once it's been run for about five to ten minutes then the whole system is completely flushed of seawater. Um, also in here, there's lots of rubber components. Um, through being left dry over the winter period, they can actually start to degrade and they can harden. So it is actually good to soak the rubber components in a silicon spray, something like that, to protect them from, um, from hardening over the winter period. Um, this stern drive in particular, um, which is quite rare, also has a flushing port. So if you didn't want to use the bellows, you can actually attach a hose, which is a normal just garden hose end onto here, run the hose and then start the engine and you can actually flush the system using this point here. It's quite rare on stern drives, but this one has it. Um, so it is a big advantage. Um, also, we need to be checking um, anodes and things like that and um, just take them off for the winter period or and then add new ones on for the um, start of the season. Thank you, Jonathan. Next, we need to fill up the fuel tanks. And here's a point. The quickest way to get water in the fuel is by having fuel filler caps that are not sealed. Rainwater, seawater can get into the tank. So check the seal on the cap. Empty the fresh water, grey water and holding tanks. And air the boat. Heaters are a good idea, but while they warm the air, they don't get rid of the moisture. For that, you need to add in a dehumidifier. Just make sure the discharge pipe is led to a sink that drains outboard. That'll be one seacock that you don't want to close. While you're at it, now's a good time to check that the fire extinguishers are in date, and also to check the alarms. And finally, give the windlass a break. You normally find that the anchor is nipped up drum tight. Just back off the tension and give your expensive windlass a rest for the winter. 
with the retainer clip on, give it a blip of down. Now the anchor can't shoot off the bow and the tension is eased. That's it. There's plenty to do to ensure trouble-free boating next season.